Hello. Today I want to talk a little bit about a topic that isn't so easy to talk about, but it's a topic that is incredibly important and hopefully can help someone else. And so that's why I'm making this video. And that topic is body image in ballet. Now, before I get started, I want to give a disclaimer because if I'm being honest, when I was going through the height of my own body image issues and insecurities, I typically watched a lot of YouTube videos that were not at all helpful to me and I don't want that to be you. And so if you are going through your own insecurities right now and you are struggling with body image, especially as a dancer or whatever else you do, I'm going to encourage you to close out this video. I'm gonna leave another video right up here so that you can click on that one instead. I can guarantee I've got lots of other fun, more lighthearted videos for you to watch. And it's never good to watch something if you are struggling with it yourself. So I encourage you to, you know, just skip and watch another one. But really quickly to introduce myself, in case you're new here, hi, I'm Sarah. I was a professional ballet dancer for quite a bit. And before that I was, I mean, a ballet dancer my whole life since I was like three. I recently quit ballet about two years ago. And now I have this platform where everybody always wants me to talk about my ballet stories. So here we are. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about my body image journey. I wish that I could give you like actionable tips for how to heal yourself, but Unfortunately, I am not an expert in this, so please just keep that in mind throughout this video. You know, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an expert, I'm just sharing my own story and hopefully it helps someone else. So when I was a kid, I grew up extremely thin. I am just really naturally thin, that's just how my body is. I was able to eat whatever the heck I wanted and I never gained a pound, I was like this. In fact, my parents even took me to a doctor when I was like 13 because I wasn't growing <laughs> and I was like so small. I think I was like four foot eight at 13 years old or something like that. I was very small and very thin and could not gain weight for the life of me. So. As a dancer, I never ever really struggled with my weight as a kid, and it was something that I just really never thought about. As I continued to go to ballet school, I would hear certain comments coming from, you know, teachers and faculty, things that are very normal in the ballet world, but like people who aren't in the world would be like, what the heck, why are you saying that to a child? Things along the lines of like, you know, tuck your butt in, suck in your stomach, I can see your lunch. Like things like that are, are not really the best to say to a kid, but you know, unfortunately in the ballet world, they're very normalized, so. It wasn't really until I started going to more summer intensives and workshops and things like that outside of my school, so like traveling, that I really started to see the effects of what body image does to dancers and just how real it is that unfortunately a lot of dancers do struggle with their body image. While I was at these summer intensives, you know, you live in a dorm with a whole bunch of ballet students, you eat together, you sleep together, you see them wake up, it's like, you know, you're always together. And because of that, I would start to see the way that these other girls would talk about food and about their body and, you know, it was never really great. When I was 16, that was the first time that I moved away from home for the entire year. So I went to my first professional school that was outside of my hometown and I moved to LA. And that school was great. I mean, our class was super small. It was a very like small conservatory program. And because of that, we were all really, really close, which is a great thing because I had so many like amazing friends that got built from this program. But it was also really hard because when you have this small tight knit group and one person might be struggling with their body image or insecurities and they talk about it, it can kind of affect some other people in the group. And that's kind of what happened to me. I never ever want to blame anybody else for what I went through. Like I fully understand that it's no one's fault and I never would hold it against anybody. But seeing some of my friends go through certain struggles and make comments and sometimes those comments just really would make me think, you know, am I eating too much? Do I not look good? Do I not have a ballet body? And so it really just like infiltrated into my brain and I, I couldn't escape it. So it was during that year that I started to really focus on healthy eating. And I put healthy in quotes because it was not healthy. It was very obsessive. It started out healthy, you know, making healthy choices, whatever. Um, but it very quickly got very obsessive to where I was just restricting myself and eating less and less every day. And, 
you know, that's not good for anybody, especially for a dancer who is dancing hours and hours a day and burning tons of calories a day. It's like you need to be eating more than the average person. And I was trying to force myself to eat less. After probably about six or seven months of doing this, my friends, I mean, they fully knew what was going on. You know, it was very obvious to see that I was struggling. And they told my teacher, they told my director that I had this problem and I, I needed help. And of course, I was not happy about that. But looking back now, I mean, it was the best possible thing and I'm forever grateful for them for doing that. You know, I'm really lucky because the teachers and the faculty at that school were so understanding and they were not the type of teachers to ever say anything about a student's body at all there are a lot of teachers who do and i had a lot of teachers who did but they were not at all they immediately called my mom they helped me get into a therapy program and ultimately they really helped me a lot because that was the start of me realizing that okay i do have an issue and i wanted to get better so that was at the end of the school year so that entire summer after that I went to the school of american ballet sab for the summer which is in new york city and my family's from new york so it actually worked out really well because i was able to get established with a therapist who specialized in like food and body image. And throughout my summer, I would go to these therapy appointments literally before ballet. I was in New York City, so I would take the subway to therapy and then go to ballet at like noon. And although I probably would have loved to spend my summer a little bit differently, it was ultimately the best decision for me and really did help me a lot to get back on track. After that summer, I did switch schools and went to Miami. So now I was in a whole different environment bigger school and a bigger school means that there's more students and more students means you know a lot of different perspectives on body image and a lot of different struggles and things going on and so for me that environment was really really tough and the caliber of training was really really tough and just mentally i definitely had quite a tough year the beginning of the year was totally fine i was doing great but towards the end i got injured i gained a whole bunch of weight i was going through a lot of mental health struggles and things in my personal life to the point where like when i came back the following year i had gained a whole bunch of weight i just was not happy i was you know i didn't even want to dance anymore and this led me into literally a cycle of you know every year i would gain a whole bunch of weight towards like the summer area and then like lose it and then gain it again and then lose it and like that cycle of your body is never healthy, you know? My whole perspective on food and my body and everything was so skewed. It literally got to the point where like, I even lost my period for an entire year and that's really not good. I mean, that's literally your body telling you that something's wrong and you need to fix it. And so again, this led me into really trying to better myself, although it was extremely, extremely hard. A big help was therapy. I do wish that I continued going to therapy after that one summer, but you know, my family has never gone through this before. I never went through this before. I thought that I was all done and all healed, when in reality, having a therapist for longer would have been a huge, huge help to me. I mean, even now, today, I'm not even dancing anymore and I have a therapist that I talk to every week because I just think it's so helpful to have somebody to talk to and have somebody to talk through certain things. If I'm being super honest, my body image issues probably didn't go away until I fully stopped ballet and left that world. Once I decided to leave, I had a whole new perspective on life. You know, where I once thought that I was too old to get a job, now I realized that I was super young and just starting my new career. Where I once thought that I was not skinny enough, I realized that my body is fine. I definitely don't need to lose any more weight. The one thing though that I really, really do wish was that I stayed in therapy throughout my dance journey. I mean, I think that every dancer should have someone to talk to. I think that every dance school should have a go-to therapist or psychologist or something on staff because this is an issue that unfortunately so many dancers go through and a lot of us don't have the resources to get a therapist or we're scared to tell our family or we're scared that you know, the faculty is gonna find out and they're not gonna cast us in things because we're going through mental health things. And all of that is just really, really sad. And I remember feeling all of that myself while I was dancing. And so I really hope that we do start to see more mental health awareness happening within the ballet world because it would have been so helpful to me had I had 
access to therapy like throughout my dancing journey as a student and I could imagine that I'm not the only one who wished that I had that. So again, I can't really give advice per se on like how to get over body image. You know, I'm not an expert, nothing that I say is facts, but if I did have to give like one thing that I would recommend, it's to have someone to talk to. Because to me, I mean, that was really, really helpful and that's really what got me back on track. And just to remember that you don't have to look a certain way. It is so hard to say that because I know that the ballet world and the dance world puts such high standards on the way that you look. But the reality is you do not have to look a certain way. I mean, there are dancers of all sizes and it's just really disheartening to see that this issue unfortunately happens with a lot more dancers than just me. And so if you can relate, I just want to let you know that I'm sending you love and I hope that you are healing in your journey or whatever stage you might be at. And yeah, again, I, I feel weird because I really don't have much else to add to this conversation other than the fact that I just hope that we do see a change in the near future because I would love to have resources for young dancers who might be going through the same thing that I went through. With all that being said, Thank you again for listening and for getting this far in the video. Please, I beg of you that if you could relate to this and if you are going through your own struggles right now, seek help, ask for help. If there's one thing that I hope that you pull away from this video, it's that you shouldn't be embarrassed to get help. I mean, I'm in therapy every single week. Like I said, I love it. It's great to talk to somebody. And although now I feel so much better like mentally and I, I don't feel like I'm struggling, I still have someone to talk to because it's so important to have that outlet and to, you know, just have someone to talk to, like I said. Thank you again for listening. Remember to always spread love. You never know what somebody's going through behind closed doors. So please just always be kind and always be positive. And if you're a dancer and you notice that one of your friends is struggling or going through something, don't be afraid to ask for help for them. It can be a really, really scary thing, but it's something that I've had to do within my journey as a student as well, because at the end of the day, it's so important to get the person the help that they need and not be afraid. If you care for them and they know that you have good intentions, they will understand one day why you did it and, you know, why you helped them out. Anyways, I'm done being all deep and emotional. <laughs> If you made it this far in the video, give it a thumbs up down below. It would really help me out. And yeah, let me know if there's any other topic that you want me to talk about, either in the dance world or not in the dance world. Again, I don't personally dance anymore, so sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to think of different ideas of what to actually say in these videos. <laughs> so if you do have something specific that you want me to talk about, feel free to let me know and I would love to make a video about it. Thank you again for your support. Thank you for spreading love. Please continue to just spread positivity and always be nice to everyone and I will see you in the next video. Bye.